to us this evening in this time together in this worship experience and come to us each day to uplift us and to strengthen us and to help us. May all that we do and say not only here but everywhere be to your glory and for the furtherance of your kingdom in our community in which we live. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 7, story of the house built on either the sand or on the rock, speaking of pe people's lives or perhaps even the lives of congregations. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken, liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew, and beat upon that house. And it fell, and great was the fall of it. Here ends the reading of the evening's lesson. We assume you have a copy of the bulletin this evening. And uh, the mistake was not deliberate. We are singing from the Lutheran hymnal this evening. The bulletin erroneously suggests that we will sing from the United Church of Christ hymnal. I guess you discovered that by this time in, in the first hymn. Also, a word of welcome to everyone, members, visitors, whoever you are. Rejoice with us in our 200th anniversary, our bicentennial year. We are deeply indebted to so many people for helping to make, to, to plan, to make this, this celebration a success. We don't really begin to thank anyone, but we are indeed grateful to all who help, to all of you who are participating, to make it a very meaningful experience. You are invited to the fellowship hall for fellowship and refreshments after the service this evening for an opportunity to visit with each other, with our guests, Pastor Aldifer and Pastor Herman, their wives, 
We're most fortunate that both of them could be with us. I also invited uh, a Reverend Freeman, who served this congregation for quite a time after Reverend Singer's death, but he was not able to come. He wrote a letter, letter expressing his regrets and uh, his congratulations, of course, on our bicentennial. And at the appointed time in the service, of course, we will hear from Reverend Herman and Alderfer. I uh, don't have really much to say at this point about them. I have known them in a limited way uh, over the years, some years ago, really, when I first uh, entered the ministry in a different parish, being in the Pottsville Conference of the Ministerium of Pennsylvania, in which both of them were at the time, too, by the way. I know I got to see uh, Reverend Herman at some of our conference meetings, and of course I was really a greenhorn in those days. I don't know if I learned much since, but I was a greenhorn in those days at any rate, and he kind of shepherded me around a little bit, and I appreciated that, really. And I think it was Reverend Aldifer who kind of suggested to me that he might be leaving this parish if I'd be interested, so you can kind of partially blame him that you got me, <laughs> but uh, I'll take the blame for staying so long at any rate. So uh, we do welcome them, and uh, uh, you will have an opportunity to hear them and to visit with them after the service. Also, after the service this evening, there will be opportunity to purchase our bicentennial booklet and the bicentennial coin or medal. They both sell for a dollar. And again, reminding you that this is a cost price. It is not a profit-making venture at all. They will be sold uh, uh, in the, uh, to the rear of the sanctuary in the adult Sunday school room. There are a couple of mistakes in the bicentennial booklet. I've been getting some calls on this. Of course, we were well aware of this at the outset. Uh, some were printer's mistakes and others, I guess, somebody else's. Uh, the picture of the present church definitely was supposed to be in this book that they had the cut of the church and it was clearly marked in the copy where it was to be inserted, but somehow it didn't get in. So at least we have the pictures of the older buildings and the present one you can look at anyhow. So I guess we can be satisfied at that rate. The list of the reformed uh, pastors is not complete. Uh, the, the information in the church record books was not complete. And this is all we had to go on, go on in planning the, the booklet, which had to go to the printers about middle of July. Uh, some of you people, of course, have other information available, it seems, and have some of this information uh, available to us at the at present time. And instead of reading the uh, corrected or additions uh, to this uh, list, uh, I will post this on the bulletin board in the narthex uh, outside the library, and any of you who are interested, you may copy this additional information into your booklets if you so desire. Uh, a couple of other names uh, to be added to the uh, list of Reformed pastors, and of course the dates they, they serve here. And possibly in next Sunday's bulletin, we'll have room to uh, mimeograph this for your information. Also, uh, some of the family trees or genealogies are on display in the hall just off the library, in case you're interested in that. At this time, we will receive the offering, and again, as we did this morning, we will use the clingle sock. Uh, one of these clingle sock was uh, original. Uh, it actually was used here in Hemel's Church many, many years ago. We put a new uh, handle on, a new bag on it, and uh, we'll be using these this evening for our uh, old time's sake, I guess you could say.
want you to be, our God, for to whom else can we go? You have the words of eternal life. Forgive us for the times we allow other things to become God in our lives. When we, and we pray that you will indeed be the God of our own personal lives always. Remind us constantly of the blessing of salvation in Jesus Christ our Lord. And in the joys of daily living and of our hope for life eternal we have in him. And be the God of our families. Thank you, Lord, for families that are wholesome and beautiful, for parents who have raised their children in your nurture and admonition, for children who have been led to respect parents and elders. And Lord, keep our families close to each other through their closeness to you. Be the God of our churches and of our own congregations especially. Thank you, Lord, for all the good things our church has given to us over the years. And for all those who have served in your name in helping us to understand your will and to serve you better, to find joy in daily living. Help us as your family, the church, your church, to guard against triviality or division or indifference. Enable us to be shining lights in the darkness of worldliness or ungodliness or immorality. Lord, bless our lives with your presence each day. Help us to live for you always. Bless our lives according to our needs and send us forth from this place of worship with joy and hope in our hearts. For we pray this in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> Using the Lutheran hymnal, let us sing him 199.
First of all, I'd like to say greetings and congratulations to you people at Himmel's Church from my parish, Hops and New Jerusalem. We do not have a new church as you do here, but on the other hand, we have quite an antique, as some would call it, in restoral of some of the things that are unusually are seldom found too frequently in a church. Not because of my work, but because of people who have been living there years before, and the renewal and, the, and even increasing the type of thing. So you can be proud of your church and greetings from the, our congregation that not only the 200th anniversary, but most of you may be able to celebrate also the 300th anniversary. Because with all the greatness of food, the greatness of things, life might be much longer in the next generation or two. Who knows? Perhaps, like Methuselah, some may attain in not too many centuries in the hands. Nevertheless, it is, one, it is wonderful to be here with you on an occasion like this. And I was asked, what shall we say? Not a sermon. So I shall refrain from doing this. But rather go back to some of the memories. And one of the things particularly that stands in my mind, the first meal that I ate here, I haven't seen them or noticed them this evening as yet. Mr. and Mrs. Earl Kiefer. Are you here tonight? Yes. And I remember quite well, there were two twins, Mark and uh, Mar uh, Margaret. Mark and Margaret. You're about five years old. And when I came in, they asked me, are you a candidate? I said no. It was on the 8th of May in my senior year at seminary. They told me to go up and conduct the service, period. No strings attached. And little did I dream that day that I would be later here in this area. You may say, why did I not expect? As one of those old believers, the best thing a person can do when he starts out in something like as a ministry, don't go to your home church or close by. The farther the way, the better. But be that as it may, there are many memories that come to my mind. And one of the things after I was elected, I did not know elections had already been conducted before anything was told to me, but I never anticipated to become a pastor here. But as time went on and I looked at the picture of what had taken place, I remember the old church, how it stood, with the pulpit to the one side, the organist and Mr. Kiefer being the, or the organ, Mr. Kiefer being the organist and Charles Herpy Reebok taking care of the wind, uh, the wind chest. I can still remember him as they sat in the choir in a row, your three rows like they had been, but like the organ there, and Herpy sometimes had a very interesting way to see, and he could tell how many people were there, and almost everybody who was, because he was an advantageous place. These are some of the memories we remember, but we also, I also remember one thing is this, being sitting around, as that church had been, as Mr. Aldo, Pastor Aldofer knows, you got the impression you don't talk loud. Your voice must carry, you don't want to shout them out of the back seat. Not until I was six years, or six months here, did I realize that I was not understood very far back in the church. Things like this take place when you begin. Also, I noticed something here. I may have more remark on this. I take notice something, my name, then by the hymn, anthem, and then below, Pastor Aldever's hymn. Crown him with many crowns. <laughs> 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 
And thinking of this and the thought of crowning him with many crowns, it would certainly not be Pastor Aldofer, because he's quite a bit younger. But when they look in the snow and their hesitancy of moving, probably it should be it's time and be sure. But on the other hand is this, there are other fun memories, there are very fun memories from this parish and particularly this congregation because you worked so closely together and the Schwoben Greek, if you want to put it that way, was known for their working as farmers which seldom was found. I discovered something soon that I came into the parish that there were three congregations that formulated it. But there were three different types of thought in each congregation was somewhat different from the other. Hebe was mostly factory workers. Urban was somewhat farm, but that had brought an old tradition and there they were together. Himmel's Rebuck was also a great deal of tradition, but they were almost all farmers and they were so, when you, Rebucks, Snyders, these were the principal names, a relation almost completely it was extensive to every family, I believe, in the congregation at that time, or in both congregations. Also, Mr. Kaufman, I haven't, don't know whether he has passed on, Robert, but I remember him as a school teacher. There's another old man, a man who was a lovely man, Mr. Furster Levi, and I'll never forget him. A few days after he was, I think, 84, something in that neighborhood, he was helping to break potatoes this time of the year. He received an attack, and then he was consigned or confined to the house and the home. And one day I walked in to visit him, and I wanted to make a normal visit. But he said, Ofne Pada, sign it to Hoodley. And then as he left him go on, I knew he wanted to talk. And this is something he left, and I'll leave this somewhat to all of you younger men and ladies. He said, not until they become older do they realize, and they look back over the church, and I'm saying this in benefit of the church, the 200th anniversary, may I hand woeful Christendom. Why would he say something like that? When I came into the parish, it was quite frequent that we saw quite a few of Abe Lincoln's and the Buffaloes, pardon the expression, because 38 were depression years. Many people in the area were working on WPA. And yet, I believe Reebok was perhaps the most blessed of all because there were more farmers. It was not that they had to depend upon other people so much as some other areas. I may also think of some others incident that was perhaps rather strange the first year. We were married in June when they came into the parish on the 31st of July I shouldn't say how many years ago, I was ordained in the whole Himmel's Church by Pastor Kramer as president of conference. It was also the same morning that our parish treasurer passed home. But as we think of that, I cannot help but realize I shattered and shook in my boots on that day. It's a step you take, and I could not help but think in my mind, since it's so close to my home, will I be accepted? Now I have to say, I was well accepted. And as days went on, and we went also, quite a many, quite a few funerals were in this area, 
And the largest funeral service I had, I think, was Mrs. Drum Heller. I believe formerly she was a Snyder. When I went to the house for the house funeral service, I was prepared to come to church and the house. All of a sudden I noticed that perhaps 50, 60 to 70 cars were there. And I thought to myself, have I been wrong? And we came down with the corsets to the church. And when we got here, the church was filled. Practically, except the pace of the seats required. And then also, much, many of you were sitting in a Sunday school room. It was in a Sunday afternoon. And there were flowers from the door east of the organ all the way across the Sunday school room, across the front of the church. And this one thing it gave to us, and should gives also to you as is evident, is the fact that People in this area, when something happened to one family, it seems as though the families went together and grasped each other. These are a few of the things that stand in my mind. But there is also one other, which is a little bit more on the humorous side. It was a rainy day. It was my, during my first two years in the ministry because at my old Chevrolet. And I told my wife, I said, I won't wash the car this morning. So when I came up to Reebok, we started from down in front of the store across the street. I placed my car. And uh, so the undertaker's helper came to me and I said, why do, why do you put it there? I said, I'll take it to a drive that I can get away quickly after the committal. No, he said, you come with us. Because he took a look at the car, theirs were nice and shiny, mine was old and dirty. And this is something that frequently tells us alertness as to the time and conditions is all this good. There are many more memories I could speak about, but tonight it's wonderful to see so many faces and we hope that you will continue not only with this 200th anniversary, but we hope throughout the next year also will still be another anniversary for a greater gathering of men to God through Christ. And I left at that time, and I think it was well, because already much snow was here and was followed by much younger men who did a much better job. So congratulations, good to see you again. If I don't remember your name immediately, bear with me. Because we've come to the point where we should do things. And Paul, your pastor, may I say it, Paul? Sure. <laughs> he reminded, reminded you of the Pottsville Conference where we had I've been in Auburn at that time, and he had been up at Quake Egg. And one of the things that seemed rather strange, he was a young man who had to do his cooking, his house care. His mother was sometimes with him, but it seemed rather strange. And I believe Pastor Aldover pointed the way that the problems were solved. And congratulations to both of you for your nice family and for being a pastor here and keeping the wheels going because I see he has done much more than I did. And we'll say thank you very much for the opportunity and honor being here. Over here I see Mr. Kaufman sitting, his wife, a number of faces, but some of them I do not know because these ladies hide behind a different hat than usually seen on a Sunday morning. Thank you very much.
Tonight we're going to try something a little different with the congregation participating in our anthem. So we'll have one huge choir tonight instead of just the smaller ones we usually have. So you'll all have a chance to sing with the choir. Do you have your um, at least the blue sheet that was in your bulletin? We'll have an introduction first and then we'll go into the singing of the hymn. Crown him with many crowns. The congregation sings the first two verses, the choir sings the verse, and then the congregation comes in again on the fourth and the fifth verse.
Pastor Bill, members of Himmel's Church, friends and visitors, it's indeed a pleasure to come back to Himmel's after how many years I somewhat forget, I'd have to figure it out, which we may do, for the first time and to see something totally different than what we saw the last time. So it's indeed a real privilege and a pleasure to bring you greetings from many places, not just from ourselves, but also from my home congregation that I now serve. It's a congregation that can, on this particular occasion, extend to you greetings on your 200th anniversary, because this year that congregation is celebrating its 230th anniversary. So it can indeed bring them to you as a daughter of the Church of Jesus Christ in America. Since the days when I was here in Himmel's Church, many things have happened to the Church at large. We have done so much dividing and subdividing that now I can also bring to you the greetings of another synod of our church, the greetings of the Southeastern Pennsylvania Synod of the Lutheran Church in America, coming to the Central Pennsylvania Synod Church of the Lutheran Church in America. So it's indeed a privilege and a pleasure to come back here and to bring greetings to you and also to say a few words to you about many things probably, but I thought I would like to center my remarks this evening, and they are simply remarks. As your good pastor wrote to us, and he informed Pastor Herman, I'm sure, and he also informed me that we're not supposed to be preaching tonight, but we're supposed to be making remarks. But I thought I would like to put mine in the kind of a form that you might remember them maybe a little bit easier, and that is in the form of an acrostic. And I found the word ARC, A-R-C. And I would like to talk to you a little bit about the A. The A is your anniversary here in Himmel's Church. I happen to have an opportunity to just flip through that little green booklet that you have on the history of Himmel's Church. And it told me a little bit about, and it refreshed my memory really, about some of the things that went on prior to the development of the congregation here in this valley in the year of 1773. And I saw one of the names that was mentioned after that Tulpahocken Trail was opened was that of A.C. Muhlenberg. Now, I presume that that is Augustus. Is that right? I believe it was Fred. He was Frederick, son of Henry. Well, Augustus was a son, too. Uh, well, anyway, he had several sons. Uh, if the printer was correct, my eyes didn't deceive me. I saw A.C. I think it was Augustus. Or was it Frederick Augustus? Henry son. Henry son. Pastor's orders. Okay. Henry Muhlenberg's son went over the trail. Okay. At that time, Henry, the old man now, I don't know if that was his son or not. Uh, oh, by the way, Henry did have some problems with his son, too. So if some of you had problems, don't worry. Henry had them, too. But anyway, Henry was serving Trap Church. And he was the founder of the church that I am presently serving. But you see, Muhlenberg had his hand in just about everything in America, Lutheran, at that time. And the reason was that he had a motto. And his motto was, Ecclesia Plumtanda, the church must be planted. And as these trails extended out over the mountains, the preachers came following along those trails. And so it was that there were preachers coming out of Reading and Harrisburg and other areas, coming up through Elizabethville, until one day John Interline, I think his name was John, came into this valley and began to preach here. 
And then there was the establishment also of a school. But you know, I came over today across the Blue Mountains, as I used to do many years ago, when I was going down home those days, and I come across this sign, it says, Pilgaroo. And I remember reading of the accounts and the stories of the early settlers who came over that mountain by that route and would rest there on their way and on their climb over that mountain. And it just kind of reminded me of something I had read, of how they came across that mountain, the horse pulling the wagon, the cow being tied on behind, the chicken sitting on the railing or on the back end, and down in the bed of the wagon was the sugar and the salt and the furniture, what there was of it, and possibly the children if they were small. And they came over those mountains and they settled here. As all of the early uh, communities were settled, first there was a store at the crossroads, usually a trading post. And then there was the school. And many of you remember reading the history of this congregation, of its early days of the log schoolhouse and the schoolmaster and the music teacher in the valley here. And also, finally, the coming of the itinerant preachers who used the schoolhouse as a preaching platform and a meeting place for those Christians who came on those occasions to be baptized, to be married, and to be communed, and for memorial services to be held. It happened. This was the settling of America, and it happened here early. In fact, it happened a long time ago. And of course, for a long time, this was borderline territory. Many of you could tell me about how many powwows were held down here at uh, Dornside, there in the Gap, between the Indians to the north and the white man to the south. But this was what brought about the settlement of America. This was the community development. What has happened and what is going on in our communities now? In the area where I am very close by, there is a place called Plymouth Mall. It's right off the turnpike. And there they have what is called the church on the mall. Again, it's the establishment of the same kind of a pattern that you had in 200 years ago, where you have the shopping center, where you have the school, because Plymouth White Marsh School is not very far away. And here, in the center of the shopping center, there is what has been termed the church on the mall. Across the United States, there were approximately 10 or 12 of these which were originally established. This is one of four that is surviving today. There is an attrition rate in the church, but we do not have an attrition rate with a congregation that has been able to survive for 200 years. Our congratulations to you, the first of our ark, the A, your anniversary. Second, the R, reminisce. I served here in this parish from about the 1st of January in 1947. In fact, I remember when I was installed here, it was on January the 5th, 1947. President of the conference at that time was Luther J. Lynn, who was serving at Washingtonville. And he came down and we had the installation in the then Himmel's Church building. There were 390 people present at that service. I kept a few records and I had to look them up, and I don't remember all those things, but I did look them up. And so we have in our reminiscing, some personal contacts which we have made. And as Pastor Herman reminded you, if I don't recognize your face, remember it's, what is it, 20 years ago, 25 years ago maybe, since I have seen it, and uh, I have forgotten. Uh, many of them who were members of this congregation at that time, I'm sure, are no longer with us, and a great number have come into the congregation since then. 
Sometimes in some areas we figured a turnover in a congregation to be about 50% in every five to eight years. So if I don't know your name, uh, you mention it, I may recall. But I remember some of the personal experiences that we had in our travels out in the parish here, coming over here to Himmels. I know one time I had to have some help getting home with my old car. I didn't come here with a Chevy where I a child. I left with one though, but uh, I didn't come here with one. I came with an old 33 DeSoto. And uh, it got uh, the hiccups one time on the way home. Down through the gap there where Guy Mattern lived, and Guy happened to be following me that day. It was a terrifically steep snow. And it all happened while we were here at the church. And uh, I think we blew a hose or something. Anyway, it got pretty hot. And uh, Guy, he fixed us up with a little antifreeze and some water, and we finally made it through the gap over to the parsonage at Urban. But these little things, uh, we recall some of them as we go along. Uh, the people that we met here in uh, the congregation were the most fine people because it was here in this parish that I learned something about people. I had come here as Paul had come from another parish. He came from Quake. I came from Quake. Yes. yes. Where is it? Lost in the mountains over here where it's always been. Uh, I came from Lock Haven. That's the other way. Uh, I don't know. I think I came down the river and you came over the mountain. <laughs> But anyway, we got here, and it was in this parish that I really learned something about people. Because here I learned people as they really are. And we had some real fine experiences. Simple, unsophisticated, unvarnished type of life. In fact, our daughter was born here in this parish while, while I served this parish. And, uh, we uh, attended here, uh, of course, every other Sunday in those days. So uh, I can see as we look at some of the things that have happened and the personal experiences, uh, for example, the vacation church school, we had, a, had it in the evening. And this was quite new in the then United Lutheran Church in America. I think the only other places they were doing this were down in North Carolina. And uh, we had it here in the evening. Uh, because of local conditions and situations. So these were personal experiences that came out. And uh, as we reminisce, we find that our congregation here was pretty much like many others, which I learned about as I moved about in the church. That it summarized itself in two words. That whenever you went into a congregation to talk them, to them about uh, a man serving their congregation, and Pastor Bill, you were a dean, or are you a dean now? He was, so was I. So we go to congregations, we talk to their councils and their pulpit committees about what kind of a congregation are you? And I found that in our area, and while I was here, I also did a little of this, but in our area, they said, oh, we don't want any of those radical fellows. Well, what's radical? We don't know, really. But they said, well, we are a congregation that is progressively conservative. Now, what they meant by that was that they were conservative, but they wanted to be a little bit progressive. But they didn't want that which was too far out. And so we have had many personal experiences along that kind. Well, we could go on reminiscing, but let me get to the, the C in our little arc, which is any portion of a circle, you know. The A-R-C is any portion of a circle. The C. This is the church. The Christian church. The Christian church is a witness. And Christians make vows. Pastors make vows to preach the gospel and to administer the sacraments. Pastors and congregations make vows. Congregations make vows to support their pastors in their labors. And in my day, in this parish and in this congregation, the congregation did that. And we have always been grateful for it. Church councils and members of councils make vows. In baptism, vows are made to serve God and the God of our fathers. 
I said that our daughter was born in this parish, and she was also baptized in Kimmel's Church, and that was back in June the 5th of 1959. And that daughter has now gone through all of the uh, stages that I want to mention, like confirmation and marriage and the Lord's Supper, and is now full grown and mature. Because there are vows at every one of these gates of life. Example in the Lord's Supper. There is the vow that we strive daily after holiness of heart and life and to live as in God's presence. This is the vow that we as Christians have made. I remember one time our son, who is now in the ministry also, and serving as a chaplain in the uh, deaconess community of the church. He was sitting in Himmel's church one day, beside his mother, and it was a communion Sunday, and you know how interminable those communion Sundays could be especially if the preacher was a little bit windy on that day when he shouldn't have been. But anyway, he's sitting there. He's only about two and a half or three years old. And finally, he sees me do something that reminded him of the words, Is Daddy done giving medicine now? <laughs> well, you know, for a two or a three-year-old, that's not a bad insight into life and into the church. At least it wasn't for me. Because the word and the sacrament are God's medicine for man's sin. It's God's medicine for a sick world. And this is what we need in our day and age is to keep our vows. One generation builds upon another. One pastor builds upon another pastor's administration. I know how it was when Charlie came here, and I know how it was when I came here. He built on his predecessor's administration, I built on his. Paul's been building, oh, you're getting pretty high here, how many years is it? <laughs> 20, is it? Approximately. Approximately 20. I could figure that out if I wanted to, but I, my math is not very fast. But anyway, we do this, we build on each other, because we are all a part of the total circle of God's children and God's people. We are a part of the ark. And it's been a pleasure for me to come and to celebrate with you uh, and to participate in this 200th anniversary that you have. The psalmist once said, and he said it several times, I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all of his people. And this was a psalm of thanksgiving. And this is exactly what our life is. It's always a song and a song of thanksgiving. And so I'm grateful to have had the opportunity and the pleasure and to be thankful for the part that I had to play in the 200 years of Himmel's Church. It was just one little segment of the whole circle, a little portion of it, an ark. And so each of us has his little ark, his little portion, where he bears witness to God and to man. And so I thank you for the opportunity and the invitation of coming back here and for the first time seeing your new building. And I understand it's only 10 years old or 11, uh, but I just didn't get up this way. And so it's a real pleasure to come back and to have a part in this anniversary, to reminisce just a bit, and also to bear witness to you before the church and Jesus Christ. Thank you.